Good evening everybody, it's Thursday evening, it's 6pm, here live from the office in North Street in Bourne and it's this week's edition of the Bourne Property Show Live. So thank you for joining us once again. We, we were just talking earlier on that we're four or five weeks into this broadcast already and we've reached over 11,000 of you so far in the first four weeks, which is absolutely fantastic. As always, my co-host, Mike Hollandby, Operations Manager, joins us again. Hey, Mike, you all right? Yes, very good indeed. Thank you very much, Lewis. Good to see good. you again. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, just saying what we were saying earlier on, 11,000 video That's views amazing. from our broadcast, from our live broadcast, from our rebroadcasts absolutely fantastic so thanks everybody for your support and uh, yeah let's uh, crack on with the show fantastic well again great to be here again it's amazing how quickly these weeks go uh, uh, from one week to the next but again as Lewis says thanks very much indeed for getting involved everybody a lot of the interest that we've had over the last seven days has come from you guys um, sharing the post so we really appreciate that again uh, really good uh, packed uh, broadcast last week. Oh, just seen us all come up on the screen there. It's frightening, isn't it? The camera um, doesn't make me look slimmer <laughs> at all. That's the problem we have there. And uh, so, yeah, again, big thank you to you. Again, um, my role, as I say, within the company is we look after the uh, the five offices and what we're starting to see is a lot more interactive just even within the South Lincolnshire patch as well as Bourne as well. So uh, great to have you out there. As usual, if you're watching this evening, uh, I want you to hit those thumbs, send us a quick message to like the page in the broadcast tonight so we know you're out there again we always say hit the heart so again any comments that you agree with hit that figure hit the little heart for us as well so again we know you're watching what we also want you to do as we've been saying over the last few weeks again is in that little comments box at the bottom of your page there just send us a quick message in there again just say hi boys or again any comments that you've got throughout the evening pop those in we'll try and refer those back to you anybody who we know the usuals uh, joining us in already this evening yeah Jamie's joined us Nicola's joined us already evening to everybody got a couple more people joining as well it's uh, just six o'clock so people will be rolling through the door and uh, uh, don't get your tea on just yet listen to us for half an hour burn your tea and then you can go back to whatever's left and then there's Emma Dale on at home. That's, that's the one, that's we, what we're we here for. We know we've got to get done by then. So, um, let's just give you a quick rundown of what's going to be coming up on this evening's show. So, Lewis, tell us a little bit about what's going on this evening. Yeah, we've got our uh, hot topic, our agent's advice this week, which is all about all the costs involved in buying and selling. Fantastic. So we're going to break all that down for you, and myself and Mike are going to uh, are going to go through that with you. We've got our regular features, um, why I love Bourne, yeah. um, and we've gone out again this week into the, into the town, speaking to local businesses, and local people in the community. We've got our questions and answers as always. Yeah, right. uh, and, and of course, we've also got uh, the information regarding next week as well. As always, we also need to think about, uh, or indeed uh, get involved, uh, send us any questions as we go through the evening, anything at all regarding property in the area or general property questions, Mike and myself will be helping to, to answer. Um, again, on my drive uh, over here this morning, uh, again on the radio, big hot topic, uh, which is something we're going to talk about next week. Um, so, you know, we're all very interested in the housing market and property, and there's something that's going to be really, really relevant for everybody who is living in a property in the country, which we'll come back to and tell you a little bit more about later on in the show. So, shall we kick off straight away and start off with our this week's hot topic? So this week's hot topic, Lewis, um, came from again one of the comments that we had uh, last week. It did indeed, uh, in yeah. The show uh, that came up about all the other associated costs in regard to moving house. Um, as an agent, sometimes when we go out and visit people in their homes, <coughs> and we'll obviously go through obviously the sort of the the, the estate agency fees, um, and we uh, we obviously go go through that in quite some detail, and we'll, we'll wrap that up at the end again yep. a little bit about how, how we uh, we package that up to clients, which we find uh, is really really beneficial to the client. Um, it's quite surprising sometimes when people haven't taken into account all the other associated costs as well. So we've picked up on that and Lewis again has got some great information just to help you in regards to budgeting for that move with you. So my first question really Lewis is, is when you're a vendor uh, and you're looking at selling and we've looked at the average sort of house price over the last sort of six months has been to sell at about 150 yep. and then to buy at about 225. Yeah, go on the basis of, of looking to upsize. So 150 in the Bourne area 
you'll probably get you a, a two bedroom property and then looking to go to that kind of 225 which could be a, a big three or four bed semi yeah. um, or but more realistically a, a three bed detached in the Bourne area. Fantastic. So. Um, I'm the vendor, I'm sitting in the lounge now, you've obviously gone through the sort of idea on, on pricing it to sort of around about the 150. I've indicated that I want to move up to one of these three bedroom detached properties in the area. Purchase price around about sort of 225. What sort of estate agency fees would I be looking at paying? Yeah, obviously that's the the leading question really. That's the main question people people ask. When they think costs, they just initially think estate agency yeah. fees. They don't actually think about the bigger picture and, and further costs involved. Now, when it comes to fees, we are going to work on an average here this evening and we're yep. going to look across the board and, and fees can range typically 1% through to 1.5% yep. um, but what we're going to look at is, is probably the kind of average that they're coming in at in Bourne at the moment yep. which is about 1%. About 1% yep. um, we must stress that it is 1% plus VAT as yep. well, I think some people do forget that. Yep. So for me the first thing would be to explain is that if it's a percentage fee, obviously it is based on your final agreed sales price. Yep. So it is in the interest to get the best possible price for the property. Um, so if we base it on the fact that you sell for 150, yep. 1500 pounds plus VAT. So your first fee there will be 1800 pounds for your selling fee. Okay, so again, as a vendor, that's usually the main sort of charge and the cost that an estate agent would present to the vendor of that and the homeowner at that time. Yeah, and I, and I think really that's the main one that people say get hung up about that's the wrong term but they're more transfixed on on really the price of the property and the selling yeah. fee than they are actually the other fees we're going to okay. discuss in a minute so good question and this is where i want you to all get involved so lewis has mentioned there selling at about 150 you're going to have a cost of about 1800 pounds which is that one percent of 150 1500 pound plus the vat what i want you to do in your comments box just over the next 30 seconds i want you to punch into that comment box how much you think the total costs associated would now be in total as I say to include things like solicitors mortgage removal costs those sorts of things so I'm just going to give you a few seconds take that on board but I do want you to get involved now this is really important because uh, we think that the final figure could surprise you so just take those few seconds just stick that figure in your comment box and send that over and we'll see if we've got any coming through and um, as I say this will just take you a second or two and it'll be interesting to see how many people are sort of engaging with us this evening because we really do think that you're going to be really surprised at what that figure comes out with so let's just give you another moment or two uh, usually we're a few seconds behind on this when it comes through onto our system but what we'll do is we'll start referring back to those figures that start to come through to us um, so let's move on to the next bit for us then, uh, Lewis, in regard to maybe um, the solicitors. Yeah. Um, the legal fees, that's kind of the complexity of it really. This is where we start looking at the, the greater figures and, and some people can, can, can let us get carried away a little bit, if, if yeah. truth be told. So what we've done is we've um, taken some quotes from a, a local uh, sort of conveyancer yeah. um, and we've also used uh, a quote from a national conveyancing representative yeah. as well, um, just to give us again a mean average of, of costs. So again, we're going to refer back to looking to sell at 150. Yep. Um, your selling costs are always a little bit, a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, so we've worked out an average fee in terms of conveyancing costs for selling at 720 pounds. Okay. So that's everything for the yep. sale of the property. Okay. Great. So then it gets a little bit more detailed when we go into the buying aspect, and there's a few different factors we need to look into as well. Okay. So the average fee that we've got, again, based on the numbers that we've discussed for buying, comes in at £3,351. Okay. So I, won't, I won't chuck in the 20p just yet. Okay. Now, one of the big things here that we do need to point out is, is that when we've had a breakdown of those fees and those charges, £2,000 of that was on the stamp duty, is that right? It was indeed, so we're going on the basis because obviously the you're selling your property at 150 yeah. and you're buying on, you are stamp duty uh, eligible, um, so you would be paying £2,000 based on that price on stamp duty which is built in there. Obviously if you weren't buying a, uh, selling a property sorry, and you yeah. were a first time buyer, yeah. as we know the new changes which came into the recent budget back in November, um, a first time buyer is now exempt on any property purchase up to 300,000. Okay, so there's a differential there, as I say, of the 2,000. So first time buyer, buying in that price bracket, you're gonna be 2,000 pounds better off failing that. So we're now up to 3,300, plus the sale price at 700. Yeah. So we're at 4,000, yeah. plus the 1,800 on the estate <coughs> fees. Yeah. 
We're already just shy of £6,000. We are, and just to kind of also give a little bit more detail in, in where that £3,000 figure has yeah. come from, because <laughs> even if you took the stamp duty out, it's still £1,300. Yeah. Um, so built within that are searches, <laughs> yeah. which are required on any property which is purchased, and search, as we class them as search bundles, can vary dependent on the property and the location of where it is. Um, and again, your conveyancer <laughs> would uh, not only recommend, but also advise what are the best searches to have on the property. Uh, built within that as well, if you require a mortgage, there could be a, uh, a, a fee that they require to help set up the mortgage yep. in terms of, of get everything put onto the property for you. So there's two or three different factors there. There's okay. land registry charges as well. So okay. it's quite detailed. Yeah. But what you should get from your conveyancer or solicitor is a schedule of fees, yep. um, which will break everything down for you so you've got a total figure. Okay. Um, obviously in our area, we've got LC Park. Yes. And uh, most people, obviously, well, everybody who are living on there, you'll be paying um, a annual management fee or a maintenance yep, fee. Yeah, yeah. So, um, again, if you go into these modern developments, you'll often have a charge uh, which is made either monthly, quarterly, half a year, or throughout the year, there is a charge that you'll be paying as a resident in that area for the general maintenance and the upkeep of the area. Um, which again we'll have a look at in a moment with you. Um, but also um, if you go into a modern apartment maybe, you could have management fees, yep. block management fees, which again look after the block of flats. And if you've got a block of flats or apartments in a managed residential area, there could potentially be two lots of additional costs there. And that will be, be, be made apparent again through the solicitors. But can you again um, give us a bit of an example of what some of those charges are? Because that is relevant to this local market as well as nationally. And I know it's something obviously you live in the area yeah. and it's something that you've got first hand uh, knowledge of. Yeah, very much so. It, it is applicable <coughs> to me. I live on Elsia Park. So um, there is, as you quietly stated, what's called the Elsia Park um, Community Trust, yeah. which uh, is to, uh, currently, because it can be reviewed, but currently it's £285 a year. Yeah. Um, and that, as you quite rightly said, is to overview the upkeep of the whole development and to ensure it's a nice place to live and ensure yeah. that everything is tidy and clean throughout. So that is a charge which is applicable to anybody that buys on that development, be it freehold or leasehold. Okay. Um, in terms of a leasehold, um, property, um, a two bedroom ground floor apartment um, in, in the area where I live. Um, as it stands at the minute, the uh, costs get reviewed annually, um, but they're coming in the maintenance charges at £990 a year. Okay. Now within that, that covers buildings insurance, yep. so that covers building insurance for the full block. That covers the upkeep of not only the building, but also the communal areas, making sure they're clean and they're tidy, that uh, the communal rubbish areas are all kept uh, emptied and yep. sorted out as well. Okay. Um, those are reviewed every year. They can go up, they can go down. Yep. Um, we've just had ours come down slightly. So yep. they're the kind of charges that you just kind of need to take into account. I'm also aware, again, when we've had the breakdown um, in the solicitor's quote, that there are additional sort of um, searches and fees that they have to do with the management companies yep. as well. So uh, obviously that money that you're paying annually to the management account company, we need to make sure that that management account company has been set up properly. Um, they'll need to see a copy of the records and the books to see what monies that's been spent on and obviously what, what's still retained within that account and also make sure that the management account uh, company has been set up properly. Uh, so we understand and again that the sort of prices on that can range from anything for you know your, your standard leasehold checks which will be about three four hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, are there any other sort of charges that um, a, a buyer would need to take into account if they were buying a, say a leasehold property? Yeah very much so again you've quite rightly mentioned the, the leasehold checks which again can vary three four hundred pounds. Um, there's also some supplement fees involved in terms of the leasehold and the management company yeah. which again could add an additional between 200 and 400 pounds right. on the conveyancing process of the purchase. Okay. Fantastic, so that covers the estate agency side and the solicitor's side. Um, majority of us would be in a position still then we would need a mortgage maybe. Now this again, uh, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated uh, in one respect, but again Lucy, if you could give us a bit of an idea of what the process is maybe and what advice you can give to people if they're then at that stage where they're needing the finances putting in place for that purchase. Yeah, first and foremost, and, and, and really important, is that you know we're not here and I'm not here tonight to give you any sort of financial advice. And my advice always is to ensure that you speak to a uh, fully regulated yeah. uh, and fully qualified financial advisor. Um, and we uh, introduce to a company called the Mortgage Advice Bureau. Yeah. Um, who are an independent company um, who will give uh, the client lots of advice um, and obviously advice tailored to the individual okay. as well. Yep. Um, so that's the first thing, make sure you go and see a, a qualified, fully regulated person to get your figures from. Yep. 
there are many different ways that figures can be broken down and we're going to give you a little bit of a, just an overview here. Yep. Uh, these figures have been supplied by what's called the, uh, the Money Advice Service, yep. which is a government linked, um, independent, almost like a citizens advice bureau um, for money and financial matters. Okay. So when it comes to obtaining finance or mortgage, uh, there are different things that you need to be kind of aware of. Um, so first and foremost, the broker or yep. the advisor may charge a um, arrangement fee okay, yeah. uh, for their services <coughs> in terms of all the work that they put in to get you your mortgage through application, through doing all the due diligence and all the collation. Yep. And again, those <coughs> costs can vary. They, they can vary quite a bit. Um, on average, around about £400 can be an arrangement fee. Again, that is an average. We've looked at a few different companies in yep. terms of, of, of what they charge with their arrangement fees. Okay. Um, you've also then got the booking fee. Okay. So again, this is the, the first part of the, uh, of the mortgage um, when it comes to a stage where the provider is, is, is wanting an arrangement fee to start doing the administration. Okay. And again, on average, typically around about £100 yep. could be an average booking fee. Then you've got your valuation fee, and this okay. is when it starts getting down to the, the business end, really. Okay. So when your application for your mortgage has gone in, the lender will require a survey on the property or, yep. or, or evaluation, um, and there are four different versions. Okay. Um, they could call what's just basically a very basic valuation of the property, yep. where a RICS qualified surveyor, so Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, um, would go out uh, and do a basic valuation on their opinion of the, the value of the home. Okay, great. There's a condition report, which is again, um, one step up. It will do the value of the home and just a, a kind of an overall opinion of the condition of the property. Yeah. It is what it says in the tin. Um, on top of that, you then got a home buyers. And that's for me, and I'm sure you agree, the most common survey that, that happens. Yeah. The home buyers report is a little bit more detailed um, and it goes into the, the internal and external elements of the property, the overall condition of it, and it's quite in depth. Yeah. You know, a, a good home buyers report can take two or three hours. Yeah. And then finally, there is the building survey, which is a very, very in depth, that can take up to a day. Um, that really is going through the structure of the property um, and everything that, that literally is built around. Um, and these costs can vary. They can vary quite a bit. They can vary anything from 150, 200 pounds up to eight, 900 pounds if you went for a building survey at top end. Okay. The average price of a home buyer's is around about 500 pounds. Okay, so we've got now a good breakdown of those three elements. Um, you've then got the choice of whether you decide to move and do all the removals yourself or whether you employ the services of a removal company. So again, we've looked at what, um, and again, we've had a couple of quotes from local companies, based on, say for example, a three bedroom maybe, um, and a, you know, a, a family there moving up to that four bedroom, uh, you've got a bit of an idea of what those sort of removal costs from a, a removal company is, is, is for as well, haven't you? Yeah, very much so. Again, just getting some average costs and some average prices. Um, it's very much down to what you get your removal company to do, of course, be it whether it's just providing uh, vans and, or, or lorries to, yeah. to, to move the stuff away to the next property, be it whether you get all the packaging <coughs> done as well. But again, an average for removal costs, it can vary anything from four or five hundred pounds up to seven, eight hundred pounds, yeah. just depending on the level of service that you have. Okay, so now we've broken all that down for you, let's get down to nitty gritties of the pricing. So we've got a bit of an idea of the estate fees. Yeah. We've got an idea now of obviously the solicitor's fees. We've added in those financial services and the removals. So the grand total for us then, please, Lewis. Well, the grand total to most people when they're thinking is just the estate agency fee. So originally it was £1,800. That's yep. the first thing you think, think of. But in terms of the <laughs> overall moving costs, based on the average fees that we've discussed tonight, £7,653. And I'm going to put that 20p back 20 in. Pounds. Every penny counts. Okay. So that really might stagger you, really, in one respect. Um, if you bought and sold in the past, you'll be familiar with it. That obviously, there, there are these costs associated. Um, but w one of the things that we try and really stress in all of our um, valuation appointments is we do what we call the move maker meeting. And in that meeting, we don't just go through the estate agency side of, you know, this is your 1% and you get board brochures, adverts, internet, floor plan within that. We really try and break it down to give the best possible advice we can to the client. Several reasons why we do that. We think it's best practice that the yep. client is aware of all of those costs. The other reason why we do it is that when you then come to accept an offer on a property and you're all excited, you've got your offer on your property and you're trying to negotiate and you accept that offer and then go and find the other one, 
and then you start going through these appointments and getting all your quotations through, all of a sudden you're thinking, that's cost me a couple of grand more mm. than I was thinking. Can I now afford to sell at the price I've already agreed, or am I even going to have to renegotiate on the one that I've really set my heart on as my next, you know, my dream home, my family home, my, my forever home? That puts you in quite a difficult financial pressure and burden sometimes. Mm. So our experience is, is if we give all of those costs and all that pricing up front, you've got it all as a quotation, which again, with, with ourselves, we can provide all that information. As you start that journey onto your next property, you are fully informed. That puts you in a power of, in a position of power so that when you are negotiating on your, on your own property, you'll know the price that you can afford to sell at and what you're able to purchase that next time round. Yep. Okay. So hopefully you found that very useful. Um, it is quite, uh, say, it is quite a jump from what the initial sort of figures are. And I think again, if an agent is coming out and just quoting you know, those estate agency fees, we're going to over the next few weeks talk about killer questions. What the killer questions are is these are the questions that you need to be asking your estate agents. You know, what are all the other costs? What is it going to cost me to move? I need to know how much I can agree to sell my property for. You know, what else is involved? So. Take that advice, hopefully you found it useful. Again, if you want to get one of those home move maker meetings, give the guys a call at any of our offices. And again, if it's in Bourne, again, just email Lewis over at bournesales at hillclark.co.uk or again, send a message through Facebook uh, as well. Be delighted to help you out as well um, if we can help you on that move and that journey. Really. Definitely. Just a quick uh, look at who's joining us tonight. Um, good evening to Jamie Nicola. Um, he says, really good video, guys. Appreciate that, Nicola. Thanks very much. Um, Kimberly joins us as well. Paul, Jane, John. Um, good evening, Mike and Lewis. Excellent show as always. Thank you, John. Craig joins us as well. Paul said, loving how informative it is. Good. That's what we're here to do. We're here to try and just give you some advice, um, give you some hints and tips to try and make things easier. Fantastic. Well, I say, thanks very much indeed for getting involved. Hopefully, you're answering all the questions that you want uh, answering because I say all of this, the content of these shows is coming out by talking to the community. As Lewis mentioned earlier, we've been out again in the town again today. Um, we, we love this button on Thursday, don't we, when we're walking around. We walked in this afternoon to Stephanie's <coughs> Flower Shop. James, as soon as he walked in, he said, you're the boys off Facebook. You're here to come and talk to me, aren't you? It's better than the ones <laughs> of Crime Watch, though, so we're OK, so that's fine. So, um, again, it's great when we're out and about talking to people because you are genuinely getting really involved in this programme. And, again, we've seen those figures increase week on week. <laughs> Hello there, I'm with James from Stephanie's Flowers in the Angel Precinct in Bourne. And uh, James, you've got a question for us regarding the rental market. Yes, yeah, we hear a lot about the uh, younger people uh, with rental properties. Just wondered how that uh, would affect the older generation in Bourne and rental properties. Okay, good question. We'll all go away and get some uh, research into that and come back to you with an answer. Okay, lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. So we've taken that question on board and we've done a bit of research as we always do and I've got some figures for you. So you may be surprised to know that in the Bourne area, there are currently, and this figure is rising year on year, there are currently 133 private tenants renting properties in the Bourne area through a private landlord or through an agent who were in their 50s and 60s. Okay. Now, typically um, in that age bracket, we might have seen in the past where you know they've gone through the stage of the 80s and buying a council house, moving up through the ranks of you know the the, the thatch years of everybody wanting yep. to get into the, the property. Well, oh, I don't. I wasn't born. You weren't born. Obviously, yeah, that's no, you were yeah. still in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the culture has always been to get onto the property ladder in own homes. Not everybody's always been in that position, and there are still a generation that um, uh, are still in rental. But also, it's a lifestyle choice these days that a lot of people opt and choose to go into a rental property. Again, sometimes it's because of obviously the maintenance in the ongoing charges and the peace of mind that they haven't got those additional costs. So nowadays, it is much more of a lifestyle choice. Um, but what we've looked at is the average rent in at the Bourne area at the moment is now at £665 per calendar month. Now, if you look at um, what somebody will be receiving as their pension when they get to the age of 67, the average, well, the, 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 uh, the pension at the moment is at a £155.95p a week. When we get to the stage where you then have to rely on your pension to pay rent, there could often be a shortfall. Mm. Obviously, most people will, will may well have a private pension to top that up. But when you look at the living costs and inflation each year, and obviously with, house, uh, with the housing market and the demand for rental properties, 
the rental price in increase each year is going up probably from 3%. We've probably seen it go up to 6 or 7% year on year. So those rents are getting more and more expensive as well. So what we've had to look at here is, is obviously what's going to be happening into what we now, we, what, what we call the retirement market. So not retirement market, retirement market. So these are these people who are in these 50s and 60s that are probably going to have to then continue renting maybe on until their mid to late 80s which is now on average where you know our life expectancy is taking us to so there could be a shortfall potentially there of 20 years of having to continue renting so that's having to be dependent on pension as i say life savings um and also help from sometimes from the government mm. so there is that market so it's a really good question james because there is this market even within our local area where these people are going to be you know potentially in those rental properties for a good number of years the only other thing to take into account is obviously as we get towards those you know mid to late 80s health etc you might then need to go into care home or family uh, helping out as well so it is it is a concern for people to be thinking even in that age group um, that uh, you know how they're going to be paying for that rent going forward in the future what I have looked at as well is if we look back to the market where we we talk about the 20s and the 30s and people in those age brackets um, a lot of people again have opted to go into rented as a lifestyle choice but again because of the costs involved now in actually buying your first property is getting more and more expensive and it's so much more difficult in that market now to get a deposit together a lot of people have gone into rental that way and having to wait sometimes down to the 40s or 50s to get inheritance money through to be able to get a deposit to buy even sometimes their first property in their 40s or 50s so that's a real change from what we've seen sort of 15, 20 years ago in the housing market and also obviously the rental sector. And last week we were talking about the house values of what's happened in Bourne for over the last 20 years. Fast forward that another 20 years, you know, that, that's, a, that's a concern that people in our local town will be thinking if you're, you know, you're just starting on your first job and you want to get on the, on the housing market, it may well be that you're going to have to rely on inheritance money yeah. from, from from grandparents or parents even in the future so a really poignant question that you put forward there James hopefully that's answered it for you again if you're in the rental market and again you've got any questions or you're thinking you know what what monies do I have to put together in order to get a deposit again love to get your feedback love to get your comments coming in so again send those over to us Brilliant, fantastic. Um, just a hello and good evening joining us this evening. Paul has uh, joined us, uh, Mandy, uh, Stu, Jess, Wendy, good evening to you all. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's a real good interaction with everybody tonight. Lots of people viewing, which is fantastic. What do you like about working in Bourne? Obviously, you've been here a long time. Yes, yeah, I've been here 20 years. I've had the shop for 20 years. I'm uh, born through and through, born and bred. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel we have a good, strong community spirit here. We have some good, lovely, regular customers. Um, yeah, very enjoyable town to work in. Brilliant, fantastic. So, uh, we've also got to talk of the town. Uh Hello everybody, just out and about in Bourne again. I've just managed to catch up with Claire, who's the publisher of the Discovering Bourne magazine. So Claire, why do you love working in Bourne? Hi Lewis, Hello. great to bump into you. Indeed. Um, I love working in Bourne. I find um, there's lots of different shops, um, lots of individual shops. The shop people and, and owners really want to uh, get involved in the community. And hopefully within the magazine, we help them achieve what they need to. That's great, fantastic. Uh, Lewis, we mentioned at the start of the show that a uh, hot topic that's come through uh, only today on the news, major news breaking today. Yep. What is that and how's it going to affect us? Yeah, very much so. A um, little bit of information has come out in the media today about the, uh, in April, proposed for April, yep. um, is a real hike in council tax. Yep. Um, it's obviously a hot topic to any anybody that yep. owns or rents a property. Um, obviously, uh, council tax is, is payable. Um, so next week, we're going to bring in a lot more detail how that can affect you. Um, well, I didn't talk about it nationally, but we're going to talk about it more importantly into the South Kesteven area where we are today. So next week we're going to talk about the proposed rise in council tax, the storm that it's creating in the media nationally, what the government's response is to it, but more importantly, how it impacts the people of you in Bourne and surrounding areas. Fantastic. Look forward to that next show. So, Lewis, you nearly thought you got away with it this evening because I haven't mentioned it, but uh, if I just roll backwards a little bit here, we see we've got a little bit of uh, silverware. Yes. On the desk here, so uh, yeah. would you like to tell us a little bit about, obviously, the, the grand trophy that you've uh, got something about the desk yes, for me? Yes, thank you. This is uh, awarded from our uh, collective sales meeting, uh, which we had Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Um, where the, the yourself and, and obviously the, uh, the managing director of, of the business was awarded um, the top residential sales office for January. 
um, and the I think the top lettings office went to Spalding Lettings yeah. as well. So congratulations to them also. Um, but yeah, you know, fantastic first month of the year. Um, an office which only opened in July, um, getting you know the top residential sales branch. Um, in, in the first month of the new year is absolutely fantastic. We're over thrilled. We, we can only thank all the people of Bourne and, and the area that have supported us, uh, given us your business, uh, which we really appreciate. Come and talk to us. Every little thing, even viewings of, of, of the videos, the live broadcasts, it makes a difference to making this business successful. And all we're here to do is try and help you. And our success comes from the business that you give us and obviously the success that you bring as well. Fantastic. Well done. Congratulations thank you. again. Uh, so again, thanks to everybody for getting involved. I hope, we, uh, hope you've enjoyed the show again. Looking forward to getting next week's show uh, rocking and rolling already for next week. But as I say, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you in next week's broadcast. Thank you very much indeed and have a great week. Thank you. Good evening. Are we doing it? We've got it. We've got to do it. It's one of them, isn't it? <laughs>